This is Mrs. Appia with Lesson 10 from Module 4, Simple Interest. Student outcomes for this lesson. Students solve simple interest problems using the formula I equals PRT, where I equals interest, P equals principal, R equals the interest rate, and T equals time. When using the formula I equals PRT, students recognize that units for both interest rate and time must be compatible. Students convert the units when necessary. Copy the essential question, what is simple interest? To find the simple interest, we use a formula. Interest is equal to the principal times rate times time. So the formula is capital I equals capital P times R times T. R is the percent of the principal that's paid over a period of time, and it is usually per year. Uh, T stands for time, and time is measured in years for this formula. R and T must be compatible. For example, if R is an annual interest rate, annual meaning yearly, then T must be written in years. So what is simple interest? Simple interest is the amount of money earned on an investment or the fee for borrowing money. So let's get started on exercise one. Find the balance of a savings account at the end of 10 years if the interest earned each year is 7.5% and the principal is $500. So the principal is the amount of money that you are either investing or you are borrowing. In this case, you are investing because it is a savings account. So what you want to do for each problem is start by writing the formula I equals PRT. Then you want to identify what each of those variables is. I stands for the interest and the interest is what we're going to be finding. So that is our question mark for now. P stands for principal, which is the amount that you are investing. In this case, the principal is $500. The R stands for rate and rate is the percent that you are going to earn per year, 7.5%. When you use it in a formula, remember to use the decimal. So in this case, it will be 0 0.075. NT stands for time, and time is measured in years when your interest rate is for a year. So time in this case is 10 years. Once you have everything identified, plug the numbers into your formula. I is what we're looking for, so we'll leave that a variable. The principal is $500, the rate is 0 0.075, and the time is 10. So we multiply all of those numbers together, and that tells us the interest. So the interest earned, and you should do this on your calculator so you're familiar with using it, is $375. And what that represents is $375 interest earned over 10 years. Now, the question is asking, find the balance at the savings account at the end of 10 years. So at the, ten, at the end of 10 years, it wouldn't make sense that you only have $375. You have the principal that you put in the bank as well as the interest. So the balance at the end of the time is made up of two things. It's made up of the principal plus the interest that you've earned. The principal was $500 and the interest is $375. So the balance is equal to the sum of those numbers. And that is $875. In example two, time other than one year, a $1,000 savings bond earns simple interest at the rate of 3% per year. So we're investing $1,000, you get 3% interest per year, the interest is paid at the end of every month. How much interest will the bond have earned after three months? So I want you to notice that in this case, The interest rate and the time are not compatible because the interest rate is given in years and the time is given in months. So we need to convert so that they are in the same unit. 
So let's go ahead and start with the formula. Do you remember it? Interest is equal to principal times rate times time. Then we identify each of the parts. Interest, principal, rate, and time. So the interest is what we're looking for. It says how much interest will we earn. The principal is the amount that you are investing, $1,000. The rate is 3% per year. Remember to use the decimal in the equation, which will be 0.03. And then the time is three months. Now, since the rate is given in years, then the time must be also given in years. So all you have to do is convert three months to years. So you ask yourself, three months is what part of a year? And there are 12 months in a year, so three out of 12. So instead of using three months, we will use three twelfths so that the rate, which is per year, is consistent with the time, which is three-twelfths of a year. And you can simplify that if you prefer and use one-fourth, or you could even use the decimal, 0.25. So now we substitute our numbers. The interest is what we're looking for. The principal is the amount that we are investing, which is $1,000. The rate, as a decimal, is 0.03. And that means 3% per year. And that's why we had to convert the time to years, which is a fraction of a year. And I'm going to go ahead and use one-fourth of a year. So we multiply those numbers, and we get an interest of $7.50. And $7.50 is the interest earned after three months. In example three, we'll be solving for either the principal, the rate, or the time. So we'll start out with the same formula, which is interest equals principal times rate times time. Let's identify what we know. Mrs. Williams wants to know how long it will take an investment of $450 to earn $200 in interest if the yearly interest rate is 6.5 percent and that's paid at the end of each year. So we'll go ahead and identify everything that we know for the interest, the principal, the rate, and the time. The question is asking what, how much time it will take. So notice that there is no information given about the length of the loan. So our question mark is for T. The rate is 6.5%. Remember to convert that to a decimal, which would be 0 0.065. The principal is the amount that you're investing, and that is $450. And it says here that the interest earned is $200. So that is the interest. So notice in this problem that we are not solving for the interest, we are solving for the time. Go ahead and substitute the numbers for the values. 450 for the principal, the decimal for the rate, which is 0 0.065, and the time is unknown. Since the time is unknown, you'll keep the variable t in the problem. So on, in this problem now to solve it, what you'll want to do first is to simplify the 450 times 0 0.65. It's a good idea for you to follow along and do that um, calculation on your calculator as well. So when you multiply those numbers, you get $29.25. And then you bring down the variable t, bring down the $200. Now you have a multiplication equation to solve. You solve multiplication with division. Divide both sides of the equation by 2925. The terms cancel on the right because a number divided by itself is 1, and 1 times t is t. On the left, 200 divided by 29.25 is 6.8. So what that means is that the length of the loan, when it says how long will it take, the length of the loan 
is 6.8 years. So notice that the interest rate is for the entire year and 6.8 years is not, the 0.8 is not a whole year. So in order to earn the interest for that year, you must keep your money in the bank for that whole year. And for that reason, we will need to round this up to seven years. So interpreting your answer is important so that you would earn the interest on that last year. In exercise three, a $1,500 loan has an annual interest rate of four and a quarter percent on the amount borrowed. How much time has elapsed if the interest is now $127.50? So let's go ahead and write our equation. Interest equals PRT. Then let's identify all of the parts, the interest, the principal, the rate, and the time. So it says a $15,000 loan or a, sorry, that's a $1,500 loan, big difference. So the interest is not that. The interest, let's go back here a second. All right, the $1,500 loan is the principal. The amount you borrow or the amount you invest is the principal. So the principal is $1,500. The annual interest rate is four and a quarter percent. So the rate is four and a quarter percent. The four and a quarter percent can also be written as 4.25 percent. Recall that when you use the percent in the formula that you'll want to use the decimal. So you'll need to divide by 100 to move your decimal over two places. When you move your decimal over two places, you will use 0 0.0425. And then the time. Let's keep going here. Um, how much time has elapsed? So the time is unknown. If the interest is now 127.50. And the interest is 127.50. So notice again that we are solving for the time. Plug in your numbers. 127.50 is equal to 1500 for the principal. The rate is 0 0.0425. And then you multiply that by t, which is unknown. So go ahead and simplify 1500 times 0 0.0425. That gives me 63.75. And bring down the variable t. Bring down the 127.50. To solve this equation, divide by 63.75. And the value of t is 2. And time is measured in years, so the answer is 2 years. In this lesson, you have learned interest over time can be represented by a proportional relationship between time, years, and interest. The simple interest formula is interest is equal to principal times rate times time. Remember that the principal is the amount of money that you either borrow or invest. The rate is a percent and the time is measured in years. If your time does not come in years, if it comes in months, such as three months, remember to write it over 12 to convert it to a fraction of a year. So the formula is interest equals principal times rate times time, and we just say I equals PRT. R is the percent of the principal that is paid over a period of time, usually per year, and T is the time. The rate R and the time T must be compatible. If R is the annual interest rate, then T must be written in years.